Greetings all, greetings. Hope everyone is having a great day today. Yeah. I took a short walk this morning and looking at the mountains closer than uh, from ground level actually across the rice fields. When I the smell of rice when it reaches this stage. I don't know if you can see the rice uh, right now those are the grains that you see right there. They look like kind of yellow. Those are the grains of rice that uh, as they begin to mature and they have a distinct scent that first when I first smelled it I thought I was in the middle of a, a restaurant cooking rice anyway hope you enjoy your day the subject I want I kind of want to bring together the things that I was talking about earlier in earlier videos and well let me put it this way every state uh, to operate and to take care of its people must have its own institution and in the beginning when those institutions come into being the people who brought them into being have a plan that seemed very inclusive with everyone and it appears as they give the appearance as though it is for the best of everyone and in most cases it is for the best that's how it begins A state might have school system. Anybody from New York or California know about their state school system. Anybody from Florida <laughs> know about the state school system. But they also have health care for like children and the elderly. And sometimes the young adults who, uh, who are not making enough money for to take care of private health care. Now the country itself has its own institutions that are set up through consent of the state. And uh, in the case of the United States and Great Britain or whatever, they have uh, institutions like immigration that is run by the state, a country rather, instead of the state or city. Uh, protecting the national borders, um, national defense or offense, international trade all of those are institutions that are set up by the country now in the beginning these institutions start out with honest people taking care of business on behalf of everyone in the country or the state But as you can see, across the whole world that has the British system in place, the French system in place, the American system in place, all these institutions that were supposed to take care of the best interests of the people 
have been co-opted one by one and I told you how it, how it goes that you got the, 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 the people with money hiring the think tanks and the think tanks coming up with laws and all kinds of rules and regulations and then the rules and regulations get put in place by people who are chosen whether it be by corporations or the rich people, by the rich anyway to go into Congress or the state legislature or the city government and change what was supposed to be an institution made for the people into an institution that's going to reap profits sure, purely for them they find a way to destroy the institution for money. And today you have people talking about the economy and the, when they say the economy, they talk about only the money making part of the economy. And they, and, and they, and they, they have a name for it called GDP. But GDP only talks about when you look at it clearly about the wealth generated for the top percent of the wealthy not the poor people if you're going to look at what the poor people face you have to look at cost of living and when your cost of living is as such as the poor in America or man look at England right now that's caused by the cost of living. Look at Sweden. You don't hear it about Sweden and uh, the other European countries. Germany, whose uh, economy has been stripped over the last two years of all its largest corporations. They either had to leave Germany and go to China to produce, or moves to America. That's the option they had. Just over a hundred years ago, Great Britain was in the same state as America is today. War after war after war was having a toll on the economy. 2019, Britain is not the same country as it was a hundred years before. You have the war of, of 1914, 1945, all the lo other little wars that they were fighting all over the planet, just like America, 1914, 1919, 1940, 30, what, 9 to 45, the Korean War, Vietnam, and the other day I saw this article in the paper about these Marines bragging about how they went into Grenada now. Grenada, this 100 square miles island in the Caribbean, how they went in there and they took the island. And I'm saying to myself, wow. But anyway, Britain went into debt fighting all these wars. And to pay back the debt, They had to strip the poor people of the meager earnings that they were making. The same thing is happening to America. Education being stripped of finance. The, the American system, the American, the people who run the system, the Congress. In 19, oh, Roosevelt set up the social security system to take care of the elderly when they got old. That social security system had a surplus throughout all this time until Reagan came into office. They took every penny that was in the surplus and now every time social security is paid this like every month Money has to be borrowed. The government has to borrow the money to pay the social security system. But they said it is a government funded. That's not government funded. It was paid for 
by the people who work and put their money into it. But they're trying to make it appear to be government funded so they can take it away from it, from the people who own it legally, or are supposed to own it. America is in such a debt state now that every month, when they have to turn over, whenever they have to make a, make a debt payment, it's over the interest now. It's almost a trillion, well, over a trillion dollars. The interest payments on the debt is over a trillion dollars. I don't know if you can wrap your head around the trillion dollar number. And every month, I think it says every, yeah, every month now. They added a trillion dollars to the debt. So by the time my children or your children reach the age of retirement, it can't be any social security and what left of it cannot support the children who work and paid into it. Hence you see the immigration. They're bringing people from all across the world into the U.S. to build up the population because they don't want to tell people that we in the same state as Italy. We are not producing as many people the replacement for the people who are dying. Now when they bring people from other countries, guess what? They're bringing the young people, the young generation in their 20s and 30s and their children. So the countries now that uh, these people are coming from are left with just the elderly. And those countries are going to fall into a trap where they can't support the military, police, education system, and so forth. Just the same trap that the U.S. fall into because of the greedy people who run the country. I started out with Africa. And when I started out with Africa, it was just to give people the facts about what's really going on in Africa. From It started out as a, a means of telling people, hey, you didn't come here, this is what they expect. That rain that you see falling is gonna flood that piece of land that you bought without seeing it. And the people who are selling you this land are wickedly lying to you about it. Not that I didn't want you to own land, but I want you to come and see it for yourself before you buy it so you know what you're getting into. And that leads me to other problems that I saw in Africa didn't want to talk to because, you know, Africans are very sensitive when it comes to telling them the truth about themselves. Well, actually everybody is. I've been told, <laughs> I was talking to this guy from Puerto Rico in America about the problems in America. He looked at me and said, well, if you don't like it here, go back to Barbados. And it's not me don't like it there. It was just saying, hey, you have this problem. And if we don't talk about it, how can we fix it? But it's a few years later when Trump came into office and Trump <laughs> told Puerto Ricans, hey, you're useless. He was quiet then. So you see how things go? Anyway, how does Africa fit into this situation? I want to talk about that in more detail. But when the people in America don't have the money to send back home to Africa, and they're sending billions every month, when you don't have money to send back home to Africa to support your family, what kind of problem is that gonna cause? The governments of Africa beg for money. They don't create anything growth in Africa. They don't build anything. 
if you have oil like Nigeria, they steal all the money that comes from the oil. If you have gold like Ghana, they steal all the money that comes from the gold. Then they go to the IMF to borrow money, like in the case of Ghana, to pay the people who are in the government. Ghana and Kenya has got their problem. Tanzania has got their problem. Anybody, any one of the leaders who try to change that gets that taken out. And they will put people in place. They will bring people like Kufu Adu, raise him up, put him in place to keep the system in place. They bring the man from uh, Tinubu. I mean, look at his criminal record. And the Supreme Court in, 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 in Nigeria says, it doesn't matter. This is going to have a devastating effect on Africa when the money in America dries up. And they, people come and say, Look, we got to stop printing money and giving it to Nigerians. We got to stop printing money and giving it to Gambians. We got to stop printing money and giving it to people in Congo. Really, they're not giving people in Congo anything. They're taking people, taking the money out of, out of the resources out of Congo, making stuff with it and send it back to Congo. Now, what you get in Congo, and that's count towards what being given now, repatriated money. If I send a, 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 a barrel of food from the US to Gambia, it's considered by the government as a gift. It's non-taxed by the US government as export because it's going to Gambia and it's considered a gift from America to Gambia. Now if I can't send anything to Gambia, guess what's going to happen? People in Gambia don't understand this and the so-called economists African not telling their own people this. We're going to talk about it a little more um, in the process of time, explaining what's going on and how all this is going to affect Africa. That's why I talked about Africa first and say, look, these people are going to be coming back to Africa. And if you be careful, you're going to get re-enslaved again. Not this time sending you to America. You, you are not going to have the choice that the, the, the rich leaders the traditional leaders are not going to have the choice of sending people on ships across the water out of Africa. You see what's how it's happening? They're taking the youth and sending them to Europe, and then they're coming to Africa to take the resources. The people who will fight to save their land are in Europe. This thing is tied together in ways that people are not thinking about and those who see it Africans are afraid to talk about it because the leader will kill them anyway have a great day wherever you are we'll continue this conversation later peace